I'm Captain Steve Russell with Admiralty Yacht Sales, and this is Seva, a 52-foot, 2006 Malcolm Tennant Design Power Catamaran. This baby is made to travel anywhere you want to go in the world, whether it be the Med or it be the Bahamas. So let's take a look inside. As you enter from the stern, you walk into a well-appointed salon. Dead ahead, you have a bar with permanently affixed bar stools. Off to the right, you have your table where you can sit down and have your lunch or dinner or anything you want. The galley is set with a dishwasher, a stove, an oven, a large refrigerator, stainless steel sink, and all the wooden cabinets in this boat are all Brazilian wood. The cabinetry and the countertops are very well done. All the countertops are granite. The door off to the left will take us up to the helm in just a moment. The helm is very well appointed with a sky lounge with an L-shaped seating area with a table so you can sit down and relax while you're underway. Off to the left you'll see a stack of drawings. These are the original drawings for the building of this boat. The owner has kept them and made them available. As you can see, there's windows all around, so your view is spectacular. There's also a TV mounted here. As we turn around, you'll see that there is a very nice helm chair. There's also a day head right behind the helm, which is also very nice. As you look at the dash, you'll see it's very well laid out, and if you don't like steering the boat with the steering wheel, off to the left hand side, and you'll see in this picture off on the left, is a joystick. That joystick controls the rudders. It's hydraulically controlled. The dashboard is set up with your engine monitoring system, several Raymarine monitors, a new Raymarine chart plotter, autopilot, and the starboard engine monitor. Also, it has electronic shifting and thrust. Off to the left, you see the VHF radio and monitors for other parts of the boat with all of your electric, 12 volt, 240 volt, and 120 volt. To the right of that, you've got your generator starting system and your air conditioning system. So this dashboard is made for ease of use of every captain. Now let's go down the stairs and look at the master state room. As you see, there is a TV mounted in the sky lounge. As we enter from a slight hallway into the master state room, the first thing you'll notice is a queen size bed. Also a dresser with granite tops and a shelf to put baskets for anything you may want to have. You'll also notice that there are fans throughout the boat. The reason for this is that the owner runs fans throughout the boat when he's not on board and he does not run the chiller system. You'll also see that there's a full-size closet. Behind the bed you'll see two doors for cabinets. Those are very large storage areas. Now we'll walk down to the master head. Again, you'll notice granite countertops. The Brazilian wood in this boat is absolutely beautiful, as is the workmanship. Off to the left, you see what is called a wet head. That means that the shower and the toilet are in the same room. In this instance, the floors are very nicely tiled and there's plenty of room so you don't feel like you're in a small closet. Notice all the storage that's in the cabinets. Now we walk across the hallway into the laundry room. You'll notice drawers all off onto the right and cabinets for storage. 
there is a combo washer dryer and in the back there is a large freezer to store all of your meats and vegetables when you're traveling through wherever it is you may want to travel. All the rooms have plenty of fire extinguishers. A very, very comfortable head area. Now we'll walk across to the guest stateroom. We go down the hallway. And you notice it's pretty much a duplicate of the other master stateroom. The cabinets in the back with the storage. Queen size bed. Each one of the beds has end tables on them and a granite topped dresser. There's also accent lighting in both of these rooms with lights underneath the beds. Another full-size closet. You'll sleep in comfort in this room. As we go down, you'll see again granite countertops into the guest stateroom head. And the wet head. The tile work in these wet heads is very nice. First time I've ever seen that. Plenty of room, you don't feel like you're in a small room. Now this head is shared with, you might call it the cruise quarters or another guest room, but it is a single buck bed. Again, a lot of storage underneath the counter. Underneath the bunk bed you have drawers and a full-length counter, again granite. It has its own air conditioning settings. And essentially a bookcase back in there that you can put all of your books you want to read. Indirect lighting, again a very comfortable room. Now as we turn around and to exit the room, you notice a closet on the right hand side. A great place to store all your jackets and foul weather gear. As we go up the steps and look down the hallway, you'll see steps on the other side. Those are steps that take you up to the helm area and also up to the flybridge. Access to this area is directly from the salon and galley area. You can see the double doors that go out. Now we're going to go on up into the flybridge area. We go up these steps, make a short turn and go up the other steps. Now we're in an expansive sky lounge area. This area up here you see there are no pads right now on the seats. They are available. They're just being stored at the current time. You have a rib dinghy with a 25 horse engine on it. This rib is made perfect for the Bahamas, as you can see right here. You can see the crane in the background that gets it up and out of the way quickly. As we walk around, you see a dock box. Also, a almost brand new six-person life raft that is included with the sail. All the hatches that are above these seats here are all brand new. They've just been replaced. You have a wet area. More seating. Now as we move into the captain's seat, again, pads are available. They're just stored away right now. The captain has a great view while sitting here with the same new Raymarine chart plotter. 
an engine monitors, and joystick for driving the boat. You can see four brand new solar panels. You'll also notice on the boat that all of the windows are covered with canvas. These are brand new additions. They've been added on there to help protect not only the glass, but keep the boat cool when the owner's not there. You can see the view that you have by being up here. Look at your neighbors and see everything that's going on. The owner designed and had fabricated this very strong structure for the Bimini. It's strong enough that you can even hang a hanging chair on it or maybe even something to lay in while you're in the Bahamas or in the islands, enjoying the day. Access to the roof is quite easy, so we're going to jump on up here. You can see the four new panels. As we turn around, you can see the weather vane, the brand new radar, and also what you're going to see is you're going to see a FLIR. That's a night vision camera. And when you look through that, this is what you see. One of the best safety devices you could ever have on a boat. Again, the Raymarine radar is brand new. Now, as we come around the back towards the stern, you have another access point to the flybridge, and that's this ladder. So we're going to go down that ladder. Take a quick look at the cockpit area, and we're going to go down the side of the boat. First, let's take a look down towards the bottom steps here. One thing about this boat is that the builder this time extended these bottom steps two feet out. Give a little more room back there to get on and off the boat. The water you see there is the chillers working, air conditioning the boat. One thing you'll notice is you have substantial railings on this boat. Make them very strong. The walkways are very wide. The first hatch you see is access to storage. The glass hatch here and the glass hatch on the other side are both brand new, have just been replaced. And you're going to see a hatch dead ahead. And there's one on the other side too that we'll take a look at. Both of those are storage areas. As we come up to the windlass, this is a very large windlass system. Very, very strong. You have the ability to have two different angers on there. Also, what you're going to see as we turn around here is you're going to see a hatch which has the remote control for the windlass and a valve system for a washdown. Also in that waterproof hatch is storage for lines. The bottom hatch is access to the anchor chains. One side has 300 foot, the other side has 150 foot. The 300 foot is for the main anchor. You can see by the window system here that you have great visibility. It's nice and foul weather to have those windshield wipers. There's another hatch there that gives you access to the forward storage, which is about six feet deep and tons of room. As we walk down this side, you see a couple of outlets there for waste uh, and for fuel. Again, replacement hatch that's just been put in. The door here off to the right side gives you access to the helm and to the interior space of the boat. Off to the left, you can see where you can access the dock. And if it's too low, there is a ladder that attaches to allow you access down to, say, a fixed dock that may be higher than a floating dock. This hatch here, if you open it up, that is where the membranes are for the water maker, the Spectra water maker. 45 gallons an hour.
As we walk back here, we'll take a look down the starboard side to look back at the back platform. Again, they were extended out two feet to give a little more stability when you're standing down there, a little more room to get in and out of the water. There's also right behind the doors as you enter in, the two sliding doors to go into the salon, into the galley, there is also a storage area on the floor. And ahead there, there is a dock box that is filled with cleaning equipment that goes with the boat. Now let's look at the engine rooms. This happens to be the starboard engine room. Waterproof hatch that opens up. As you come inside, you can see it's fairly roomy for an engine room. These are Yanmar engines. You can also see there's fire suppression system in each of the engine rooms. The yellow part back down there that kind of went by quickly is a manual oil change system. Each of the engine rooms has its own fuel polishing system located right next to the Raycor filters. You can see there's easy access to the oil filter and there's the oil change pump. Now let's go down the port side. Included in the port side is also the chiller system for the air conditioning. That means you have a chiller system that keeps everything cool and then feeds different fan systems throughout the boat. As we enter this side, you're also going to notice that these rooms are about as clean as you're going to get. Off to the right, you see this control. This is a manual control for the engines that a person working on the engines or whoever can actually control it. There's one for each one of the engines. Again, on this side, you see the fuel polishing system and you see the Raycor filter. Now let's look at the engineering room. We also call it the mechanical room. This is located underneath the helm area. As you come down inside, the first thing you see is you see the Spectra water maker system. As we spin around, you'll see the inverter systems that were just recently installed, for both Victrons. Now we're looking at the sound encasement around the generator. As you can see from this picture, the generator's engine is very clean and well maintained. As we come around the other side, there are other mechanical items such as the steering fluid and the air horn air compressor, which can also be used to compress other things. So Seva is a beautiful 52 foot by 29 foot power catamaran made to take you anywhere you want to go in comfort and in speed and in economy. For any more information, please contact me, Captain Steve Russell, Admiralty Yacht Sales. You can either email me at captainsteve at admiraltyyacht.com or you can call or text me at 954 295-1301. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to talking with you.